As Mac users, we've been waiting for alternatives to the 5K Studio Display, and now Samsung has just released their Viewfinity S9 5K Display. I've been using this for the last couple of days and testing it and comparing it against my Studio Display. So I wanted to share with you my thoughts and tell you if this is something that you should consider buying. So let's just jump right in with the price and the features. Both the Viewfinity S9 and the Studio Display are priced at $1,600, and they have a 27-inch 5K display. Yes, this is disappointing that these are so expensive, and it would be great to have an option that's under $1,000, but we don't. And if we want to be fair, we can compare this against the height and tilt adjustable studio display, which runs $2,000, which is the one that I have. The S9 comes with a matte finish, it's fully adjustable stand, a snap-on 4K webcam, and 90 watts of power through Thunderbolt. The studio display comes with a tilt adjustable or height and tilt adjustable stand, a glossy display which can be upgraded to nano texture for an extra 300, a built-in 1080p webcam, and 96 watts of power through Thunderbolt. Both the studio display and the S9 do include speakers, which we'll get to in just a moment. They have USB-C ports on the back, and in the case of the S9, a mini display port out. The unboxing experience really shouldn't matter, but the S9 is the same crappy unboxing experience that you find with all displays outside of Apple. The box is super generic, and when you open it, some things are just kind of randomly placed. You need to pull out all the parts and put together the stand before attaching it to the display. And look at this thick brick. This thing is massive. It is so big compared to this iPhone 14 Pro. And once everything's connected, you have about a 10 minute setup process because this is also a smart display. With the studio display, the unboxing is just pop open the box, pull out the display, and plug it in. There's no external power brick. The design of both displays are similar at quick glance. They're both silver with black bezels, and the S9 has this stick-on camera popping up from behind. You'll notice that the bezel is thinner and more modern looking on the S9 compared to the studio display. But when it comes to materials, Apple is far ahead. The entire case of the S9 is plastic. Well, everything except this aluminum bottom plate right here. The studio display is an all aluminum chassis with a solid one piece stand. And I mean, come on, look at this hinge. The studio display is just a little bit beefier all around, which probably helps it be just a little bit more sturdy and resistant to wobble on the desk. The stand on the S9 is adjustable in height and tilt, but you can also rotate a full 90 degrees if you want a large vertical display. That also gives you the ability to level your display if your desk isn't quite straight, which is nice because sometimes I do run into that. The feeling of the height adjustment on the S9 is not great though. It is not smooth, it creaks, and it's difficult to get just the right height with small adjustments. Also, the power cord has pulled out multiple times just by adjusting the display. The studio display on the other hand is incredibly smooth and you can adjust it with just one finger. There's no creaking and you can easily get the perfect height. Next, I wanna talk about the displays, the speakers, and other features, but first, I wanna talk about another great desktop accessory from today's sponsor, Ugreen. The Ugreen Nexode 65 watt seven in one charging station can help simplify your charging needs. This is a high speed GAN charger that can charge up to three AC powered devices and up to four USB devices. And with GAN, you get a more energy efficient and cooler operating charger. The USB-C ports can charge at up to 65 watts each, which is great for many laptops and high powered devices, while the USB-A ports can each charge at up to 18 watts for phones, tablets, and other gadgets. Unlike other USB chargers, this Ugreen 7-in-1 has three AC ports, which means you can easily connect other desk accessories like a work lamp, air purifier, or even a printer. This charger is also packed full of safety features like short circuit, overcurrent, and overload protection, along with protection from ground faults and temperature. Oh, and I also wanna point out that there's a power switch on the back which can be used to easily shut down or disconnect devices when not in use. So if you're looking for a powerful charger for your desk or work setup, check out this 65 watt seven in one today using the link and code in the description below. And my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Having another 5K display option is awesome, even if it's still very expensive. But for Mac users who want a 27 inch display where everything is just the correct size without any crazy scaling artifacts, this is great. Both of these displays are crisp and clean and sharp and look fantastic at 218 pixels per inch. Compared to a 4K display at the same size, this just looks much better. Both the studio display and the S9 get up to 600 nits of peak brightness, which is as bright as you need in a bright room for any regular computing. Although at full brightness, the studio display does look just slightly brighter. The S9 has a matte finish, which reflects less light than this model of studio display that I have, which is glossy. 
Whether you prefer matte or glossy comes down to personal preference and the environment that you're working in. If you have uncontrollable light behind you where you sit, the matte option may be a better fit for you. Both of these displays have regular old LED backlighting, but the S9 does support HDR 600. When viewing HDR video, I find that the S9 has a better overall dynamic range with more detail in the shadows and brighter highlights when full screen. Looking at backlight bleed, the studio display has much better control, although it's still not perfect, but the S9 has more artifacts or light bleeds around the panel. The studio display blacklight has a slightly blue tint, but when watching letterboxed videos, it still looks better compared to the S9. It looks less distracting. The backlight bleed seems to translate to color uniformity as well. As we cycle through a number of different colors, the studio display is more consistent across the whole display than the S9. In normal use of watching videos or looking at photos, I haven't actually noticed this in practice. In fact, the colors look great on both displays. Apple has its default color profile for the studio display, and the S9 has a number of presets. For all of my testing, I've been using the P3 option, which looks very similar to the studio display, but the S9 also has the option to do smart calibration. Using the SmartThings app, you hold your phone up to the display for what seems like a really long time, and when you're done, you have a calibrated display. Going back and forth between the calibrated and the regular P3, the calibrated did look better. Now, audio is where there's a massive difference between these two devices. The S9 has two 5 watt speakers built in and the studio display has a six speaker system with force canceling woofers. The studio display speakers fire downwards and the S9 has rear firing speakers, which feels like an odd choice. And there's no way to sugarcoat this. The S9 speakers are bad. For a smart display, which we'll get to, which is supposed to be used for a monitor as well as like an entertainment display, the speakers are just terrible. They have no bass and a very restricted range. The studio speakers, on the other hand, are so good, and if you care, they support spatial audio. Here's an example comparing the speakers. The camera on the S9 is a 4K sensor that connects to the back with magnets. There is a physical lens cap that can be attached for privacy, but you can also just remove the whole module from the back as well, which is kind of neat. The camera can be adjusted vertically to help frame you, but the video, like the speakers, is pretty underwhelming. This is the 4K slim camera and microphone attached to the back of the Samsung display. As you can see, the picture is a bit grainy. It pretty soft, a lot of detail is missing from my face, and just overall it's not a great quality video. Also, I noticed that if the light is just a little bit brighter, I get completely blown out, so you may have to play with the lighting in order to get somewhat usable picture quality with this camera. And to be fair, the 1080p camera in the studio display is also not great. And this is the camera and microphone built into the studio display. As you can see, the picture is also not that great. It's got a smaller field of view. It's still pretty grainy, and of course, it's really soft. A lot of detail is missing from my face. Apple does do a much better job with high dynamic range or just dynamic range in general, so you can see more of the darks, and it just kind of brightens those things up. Whether that's good or not is going to depend on what you are looking for. But between these two displays, I'd say the studio display looks better. Also, the studio display does have center stage, which I can turn on right over here and that allows the camera to kind of follow you around so that is not part of or samsung does not have that on their camera so neither of them have cameras that are great so if that's something that's important to you you're probably going to have to look at a third-party option for a camera sleep wake is something that has been problematic for me with a number of third-party displays that i've used with mac in the past but so far the s9 has been pretty darn good the s9 seems to wake in relatively short amount of time and has never failed to wake for me yet. When going to sleep or disconnecting the computer, there is a 30 second timer that pops up on the display that is a bit annoying because it's full screen and bright, but it does shut off after the timer ends. So the studio display and the S9 do share a lot of the same features, but they also do things that the other can't. The studio display, although not a smart display despite running iOS, 
has good integration with Mac, which means that the display has auto brightness and the brightness in the audio can be controlled with the keyboard. To adjust the brightness on the S9 means fiddling around with the remote and the weird little smart TV display thing. So you have to bring up the menu, then you have to move over to picture settings, and then in here you can click and then change the brightness. Adjusting the volume means that you have to have the remote or you have to reach behind and find the little finger thumb joystick thing and move it left and right to change the volume. Neither of which is anywhere near as convenient as just moving your fingers up the keyboard. The Viewfinity S9 is also a smart display, which means just like your Samsung smart TV, you can download things like Hulu and Netflix or even watch live TV with Samsung TV Plus. The S9 can also work as an AirPlay destination to play directly from your iPhone, or you can make video calls without even connecting a computer. Then there's the Gaming Hub, which allows you to pair a controller and play using cloud gaming services, again, without a computer attached. In my testing, it worked as well as can be expected from cloud gaming. The quality adjusted frequently as I played, sometimes dropping down to 720p or lower, but that's probably more to do with the service. But overall, it worked, and that's pretty cool. Okay, so that was a lot, I know. But overall, as displays, both the S9 and the Studio Display are good. I like the colors and the brightness on both. The 5K is sharp on both. If nitpicking, the Studio Display is just a little bit better with consistency and backlight and color. The Studio Display has a better build quality, design, speakers, and integration with Mac, but the S9 has a matte display, smart features, and can rotate 90 degrees. Can I recommend the S9 over the Studio Display? No. When you're looking at paying this much money for a display, I don't see any reason to choose the S9. If saving space and combining a display and a monitor or display and TV together is something that you're trying to do, you should just use a computer attached to a display. You don't need this. All the smart features like apps and gaming can also be accomplished just using the computer without this clumsy smart TV interface and the poor speakers in the S9 make it a bad media viewing device. Plus, you can't fix the bad speakers by connecting external speakers directly to the display. So what's built in is what you get. Overall, with the studio display, the picture is slightly better and the speakers are way better, and that makes for a better media viewing experience. The only thing that I can think of that would be an advantage of the S9 is the matte display. But honestly, if you're looking at spending $1,600 already for a display and matte finish is something that you really need, just pony up the extra $300 for the nano texture and you'll have your matte display. If the S9 were priced somewhere around $899, this would be a no-brainer as it feels like a five dollars or $600 display with a bit upgraded panel. This is more of a competitor to the discontinued LG 5K, but it's priced as a premium display, which it isn't. So that's all I gotta say. What do you guys think? Is the Samsung Viewfinity S9 a worthy competitor to the studio display? Let me know below. Also, if you want to see my full three-month review of the studio display, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.